It is another brand new week and welcome to another brand new episode of our weekly devotion with yours truly. <laughs> well, the 1960s were a chaotic era, era and the quantum swift in values were deeply disturbing to Bill and Gloria Gator. The winter of 1969 was particularly bleak for them. Not only had the win- Indiana winter been a long and a hard one, Bill had been stricken with a severe case of mononucleosis. While people with mononucleosis uh, experience extreme and perpetual fatigue, fever, and body aches. Well, at that same time, Gloria, his wife, and some other members of their church member or church family encountered some painful false accusation and belittlement. Well, as you can imagine, this was a very hard time for both Bill and Gloria. During that era, across the nation, the educational system were being infiltrated with the God is dead idea, while drug abuse and racial tension were increasing. But one sunny day in the early spring, Bill and Gloria, uh, Bill, Gloria and Bill's father, George, walked across the paved parking lot at their small offices. Then George saw something and he called out Bill and Glory's attention to a spot that they had made that they had not noticed. He pointed out a tiny blade of glass that had pushed aside layers of rock, uh, dirt and concrete to reach the sunshine of the world above. Well, it seems that that blade of grass has such a strong will to live, it overcame all the odds to fulfill its destiny. Well, that blade of grass became a symbol to the gators of how God works in His creation. And it inspired Gloria to write a song expressing the hope that was shaped by the resurrection of Jesus. You may just recognize the song and the lyrics. God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. And the chorus, as we all know, goes this way. Because He lives. I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds a future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Well, decades later, the world is still in turmoil or even far worse than it was in the 60s. But, and it is a big but, God is still in control despite it. Okay, despite all these challenges that we all face today, There are three things we can all hope for because He lives. Number one, hope for salvation. The message of the cross is that Jesus paid our penalty for death when He chose to die on our behalf. He took our place so that you and I can be saved. Just like I went downstairs to the park to pick up a rock. You know, it was there doing nothing, people step on it, spat on it, it was exposed to all the elements, but I pick it up. You know, in order to clean this rock, I need a brand new clean tissue paper for a one-way transfer of the soil of this rock into the tissue paper. Now, if this tissue paper is soiled, you know, it will be a two-way transfer, right? Now, it requires a clean tissue paper in order for a one-way transfer to take place. And so, as I clean this rock, guess what? The soil of this rock is now transferred to this once clean tissue paper. You know, now the rock is pretty clean, you know, pretty, you know, see, I'm wiping out all the dust off. Guess what happened to the tissue paper? I'm not sure whether you can see it. It is now soiled. And guess what we do to the soil tissue paper? We throw it away. Now this rock is in the hand of God, being protected and being provided for. Jesus was that tissue paper, took our place and had to die on the cross so that you and I can have hope for salvation. That means we are now all resting in God's hand. So because He lives, number one, there is hope 
for salvation because he lives. Number two, there is hope for freedom. Not only did he redeem our past and our sin, he also restores our brokenness. Well, knowing that God lives gives us great strength, peace, and hope for a better future. Through Christ, a victory over death, as believers in Him, we are unchained. We are unchained. With chain is broken. We are unchained from our darkness. We are no longer chained. The chain is broken from the whole of darkness. The chain is broken from our past mistakes. The chain is broken from our past miseries and no longer under the grip of the enemy. Folks, the chain that bound us is now broken. But don't live with this change in our mind. God has broken this chain so that we can live free. Well, Jesus provides all that we need to live free in this life. He is our rescuer. He is our savior. He is the word. He is the way maker. He is the chain breaker. He is the truth. He is the breath of life. Okay, now, because he lives, he gave us number one, hope for salvation. Number two, hope for freedom. Number three, hope for power. The fact that Jesus rose from the grave reveals his miraculous and mighty power. Strength and power comes from within us. It is what we or who we have inside us that is important. What we Christ, you know what, in us, we are not easily crushed. Like this bottle that's empty. When the bottle is empty, it is easily crushed. It is crushable. But when we are filled, when the bottle is filled, you know what? This bottle is now uncrushable. Even if I try to use my hands to try to crush this bottle, you know what? It is uncrushable because it is filled. And if we, if you and I are filled by God as who lives in us, you know what? We have strength. We have power. We are uncrushable because he lives he gave us number one hope for salvation number two hope for freedom number three hope for power because he lives i can face my tomorrow i know you can too have a blessed week ahead god bless you ciao